Hey everyone, today I want to expand a little bit on two pretty powerful techniques you have available to you in your mid-journey prompting arsenal, namely image weight and text weight. I think they're underutilized because there's some confusion as to how they work. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what weights are, how they work, and how you can combine text and image weights together to really control your output. But we're also going to go over what some of its limitations are and how we can get around those as well. All right, let's dive in. Before we dive too deeply into weights, I think it might be a good idea to briefly explain how prompts work in Midjourney. Every time you prompt something, Midjourney scans your prompt and looks for keywords and then assigns tokens to those keywords. Those tokens are then used to assemble your image based on what Midjourney knows in its database. I don't know what the exact number is, but I've heard that you're assigned about 75 tokens per prompt. I'm sure that number has gone up as Midjourney's team hones in on the language model. So taking that hypothetical 75, the Midjourney bot scans across your prompt, looks for keywords, and then divvies up that 75 across. But here's the thing, it doesn't do it equally. It definitely places more emphasis on the words at the start of your prompt than towards the end. For example, with the prompt, a cupcake, a cup of coffee, a napkin, a wooden table, we have this image. Actually, that looks a little more like a muffin in my opinion, but that's kind of splitting hairs. Um, but emphasis definitely placed more on the baked good than the cup of coffee. However, if we swap the order of that around to a cup of coffee, a napkin, a wooden table, a cupcake, we end up with this image, which definitely favors the coffee cup over the cupcake. Now, to be fair, it did take a couple of rolls to get there. I think that happens a lot with, you know, mid-journey YouTube tutorials is that people tend to cherry pick like the example that worked. So I do just want to illustrate, it wasn't every single time. I got like these weird ones where it forgot the coffee cup or, you know, the napkin. Sometimes it takes a little work to get what you're looking for, but I think waiting is an important tool in getting there. Text weights are our way of letting Midjourney know to add more tokens to any particular keyword that we choose. To weight something, all you need to do is in lieu of a comma, use colon, colon, one, and really any other number that you want, or even decimal points. If you don't add a number after the colons, Midjourney just considers that a one. So if you were to take your first keyword and do colon, colon with no number, it's a one. And then on your second keyword, if you do colon, colon two, it will then treat the second word twice as important as the first one. The same logic applies if you do colon colon 50 for your first keyword and then colon colon 100 for your second keyword, it would still be a two to one ratio. For your own sanity, I would recommend numbers between one and 10, but you know, if you've got a head for math, go ahead and make the median like 1,325. It, you know, it'll still work. It's just, you'll have to do a lot more calculations. One important note on the format of waiting, and it's something that I've seen in the community feed and in a couple of other posts prompted, is that there is no space between the keyword and the colon colon, but there is a space after the colon colon to your weighted number. And then following that, there is no comma to the next keyword. When that happens, you might still get an image off and think, you know, oh, Midjourney's not listening to me, but what actually happened is that it was incorrectly formatted, so Midjourney just ignored it. So as a very basic, but kind of interesting example, let's just take the word cupcake, right? Cupcake, aspect ratio 16.9. They look delicious. I kind of like the third one. I think the third one looks the tastiest. Which one do you guys prefer? Which one is the tastiest looking to you? So if we separate the word with a comma into cup, comma, cake, we get this, which is interesting, right? It's not necessarily what you think that we would get if you just read the prompt. You would think that we would get a cup and a cake next to it, but instead, Midjourney creates this. What ends up happening here is that it looks at the comma as a colon colon, so it has the cup part of it and the cake part of it, and then wants to combine it into one image. Um, so, hence, a cake in a cup. And to be fair, the easiest way to attain that result would just be to use natural language. But I think this is a good example and illustrates pretty well how image weighting works. So for example, if we do cup colon colon 0.5 with cake weighted at two, we end up with this image, which favors the cake and the cup is now in the background. And we kind of, it's not a full, full cake, but it's, you know, still a cake. Again, I think the easiest thing in this situation is just to use natural language, like this is a cup of coffee next to a cake, and we get the exact results that we want. But where I think waiting really shines is when you have a longer prompt with multiple elements and you want to play around with the compositional balance. For example, this is an old samurai, rough beard, holding a katana in a mystical forest. Um, looks great, pretty much exactly what we asked for. So let's play around with some weights and see what happens. So waiting Katana at four and Mystical Forest at two gets us this. Uh, it's interesting that 
the first image shows that the composition has completely changed and is very much favoring the katana. Um, the other images, yeah, so-so-ish, um, but really that first image is kind of the winner. For another example, I ended up cranking Mystical Forest up to four and Rough Beard up to two, leaving the Samurai and the Katana at one, and we got these results. And you can see that it's treating that Mystical Forest with more importance by making everything a wide angle to show more of the scenery. Um, that third example, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. I guess it's really focusing on the heavy beard maybe as an alternate, but for some reason it just kind of gave me a like a hipster photographer. Um, that definitely does not look like an old samurai. But as a starting place for a prompt, it's actually not that bad. And I think that by adding to the prompt, you could really fine tune it to get something that you were looking for. And very quickly, before we move into the next section on image weighting, I just wanted to ask if you haven't had an opportunity to like and subscribe, if you could please do so. I really am trying to grow the channel and would be much appreciated if you did. All right, let's dive in. So I think we all know how to use reference images in Midjourney. Um, you upload an image to the Discord server, you take that URL and then put it at the front of your prompt and it will act as a reference image. But I don't often see people using image weighting, which you can do in Midjourney uh, via dash dash IW. You can score an image weight between 0.5 and 2, which tells Midjourney how much to rely on the reference image to its final output. I do think it's important to note that image referencing is not the same as stable diffusion's posed image. Rather, the output is something that's inspired by your reference image. If you want a direct one-to-one, -one, you might wanna check out the video that I did on Leonardo's uh, posed image. The link is below. But that is not to say that you can't get pretty close in Midjourney. So I took this image of Scarlett Johansson as the Black Widow doing the superhero pose um, and gave it a prompt, a female assassin, red hair, black outfit, Black Widow in the style of Jay Lee. Uh, Jay Lee is a comic book artist who actually has done uh, some covers for the Black Widow with an image weight of 0.5. And these were the results, which I wouldn't necessarily say is very Jay Lee in style, but you know, it definitely got the whole Black Widow thing. So let's try cranking the image weight all the way up and see what we get. And here we get something much closer to the pose, although it did lose all of the Jay Lee-isms of it. But just to show how you have to play around with things a little bit, um, I took Jay Lee and gave him a weight of 10. And these were the results, which pretty much still look very photographic. Um, so I then took the image weight down. So again, same prompt with an image weight of one. And now we get this, which is starting to look a little more illustrative, not completely in that Jay Lee style, but still like it definitely is now incorporating elements of the illustrative style that I'm looking for. So let's move on to a different example where I can show you some ways of maximizing your image results and some tricky things that Midjourney does when you negative prompt. So this was for a project I did a little while back. It was a fictional documentary about the making of a Dark Tower movie directed in 1980 by Steven Spielberg and starring Clint Eastwood. Uh, you don't really need to know much about the Dark Tower or anything. We're just gonna pretty much stick to the images here. But if you are a fan of Stephen King's The Dark Tower, you know, you can check out that video, it's on the channel. So a prompt that I used in that project was action shot, young Clint Eastwood as the gunslinger, firing his gun in an underground mining tunnel, Old West, Steven Spielberg, Western film, horror film, full body, outstanding cinematography, style by 1980, 70 millimeter. I actually used V4 for that project and getting Clint Eastwood's face was a real hassle back then. So, but apparently it comes in pretty okay now. The images are okay. Uh, they're not as dynamic as I want them to be. So let's use an image reference to see if we can kick that up a little bit. So using a reference of Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, it kind of works. I mean, he's got that hat. It's not quite a, it's a fedora. It's not a cowboy hat, but let's see how that works with our prompt. Using an image weight of two gets us this, which has the dynamics that I'm looking for, but you know, it's very Harrison Ford. So let's try dialing it back and see what we get. Dialing back to a 0.5 gets us this, which is definitely more Clint Eastwood. Now you can see that in that second image and I guess kind of in that fourth image, but he's got that weird glow on his gun there. That's sort of strange. So since Mid Journey was having a problem with getting that dynamic pose of Harrison Ford and the face of Clint Eastwood together, uh, I went back to the old trick of photo bashing Clint Eastwood's face onto a Harrison Ford body. Actually looking at those fingers, it looks like I photo bashed um, Clint Eastwood's face onto a Mid Journey V4 output. But that ultimately got us here, which I think the, probably the third image would probably be my go-to. Uh, maybe, yeah, probably the third image. So yeah, we got there. 
So now let's experiment with some negative prompts and see what we can do. Uh, a negative prompt is just adding a word in, colon, colon, and then a negative number, uh, and that should hypothetically remove things or tell Midjourney you don't want to see those things. Um, so we're gonna start off on easy mode and just go with Clint Eastwood's uh, belt and his holster. So hilariously, what Midjourney did when I prompted uh, negatively on belt and holster, it just moved it into a you know mid to close up shot. It's pretty tricky, Midjourney, pretty tricky. Technically, it did give me what I asked for. So instead of continuing on that path, I just decided to torture myself and try to remove the hat. Um, that I knew was going to be a little bit difficult given that the image reference has a hat in it. And no matter how much you text prompt, I think that Midjourney is just gonna wanna put that hat in. And indeed, after numerous attempts, that hat just would not come off. So we moved into going back to photo bashing. I found a random image of Clint Eastwood from Hang 'em High, did my fairly terrible photo bash with the Harrison Ford image. I ended up with this image, which doesn't look too bad. I think that that's something that I could work with and possibly take in as another image reference and do the whole process over again. But again, this was just as an experiment to see if I could get the hat off, which via straight text prompting, no, but you know, via photo bashing, yes. So hopefully this was helpful to you and gave you some ideas for some future prompts. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys. And as always, my name's Tim, and I thank you for watching.